Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Acting Chief Executive Officer of the International Code Council, Dominic Sims. Good evening, everyone. Are you having a good time at this year's conference? Come on. Outstanding. On behalf of uh, President Bill Dupler and the entire Board of Directors, I want to thank you and welcome you to the International Code Council Annual Banquet. We want to start by thanking the host chapter chair, Melanie Adams, and all of the local chapter volunteers from the Oregon Building Officials Association. And Act, yes, come on. The Oregon Building Officials Association and their partner chapters throughout northwest, the northwest part of Oregon have really done an outstanding job for us this week. This has been one of the most successful annual conferences to date. Success requires a large amount of planning, coordination, and hard work. And this, the host chapter certainly exemplifies what it means to be a team player. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the evening. At this time, I'd like to call on Pastor Dion Jordan with the Methodist Episcopal Church to offer a blessing and invocation for this evening's event. Pastor. Good evening. Should we bow our heads? Almighty and everlasting God, before we ask you for anything, we want to take time out just to thank you for everything. We thank you for allowing those that have made it here to travel safely. We thank you for the food that we've had the pleasure to receive for the nourishment of our body. And we thank you for what the ICC stands for. We thank you for a mind of safety. We thank you for blessing us with resources and with knowledge to try to make this a better place. We ask that you help us to help others to keep this what you created, a safe world, a safe place. And we'll always give you the thanks for all the things that you've done and all the things that you're doing and all the things that you're about to do. Amen. At this time, I'm very pleased to welcome somebody who really needs no introduction. He has served on the ICC Board of Directors, and this evening has agreed to be our Master of Ceremonies this evening. The recent winner of the Ronald H. Brown Standards Leadership Award, I want to introduce a good friend of ours, Ron Lynn. Ron? <laughs> Thank you very much, Dominic. It's been an honor. You know, there is actually a script for all this, but why bother with those things? At this point, right now, Steve Dagger is in the back going, oh, not again. Thought I got rid of him. But first, before I get on with the program, I just wanted to say uh, a few words about Bill and Janet Dupler. Uh, it's a, they're an incredible couple. They have spent their time with ICC almost every anniversary they have spent at an ICC meeting, an annual business meeting. They have devoted their lives. She has been the most gracious of women here, uh, always, always introducing herself to first timers, to the new board wives, and just going out of her way. And it is truly with love and affection that I just wish you well. You're wonderful people, wonderful. Now, as a brief caveat here, uh, I was told a couple weeks ago, or asked a couple weeks ago for the, to do this honor to be a Master of Ceremonies, but I was given certain restrictions. <laughs> First, I cannot tell a joke that is funnier than Bill's, which means that I cannot tell any jokes. I don't know any. Sorry. 
Second, and this was apparently by popular acclamation, I'm not allowed to sing. Yeah, yes, see, all right. So with that, again, thank you very much for being here. And to begin, I am pleased to share with you that the ICC Foundation has awarded Code of Honor scholarships to 58 governmental voting representatives. Okay. Those scholarships support their participation in this year's final action hearings. The Code of Honor scholarship recipients come from 27 states and the Cayman Islands. The program provides opportunities for code enforcement professionals who otherwise, due to a lack of funding, would not have been able to take part in the code development process. The scholarship donors are listed on the screens and we thank them for their support of this very important program. Now, for a moment, would the Code of Honor scholarships recipients who are here please stand up so we may recognize you. And let's give them a round. We have a distinguished keynote speaker with us this evening. The International Code Council works closely with many organizations to ensure public safety in the built environment. One of those key allies is the Federal Emergency Management Agency and its U.S. Fire Administration. We share a common purpose in disaster mitigation and public safety. FEMA and USFA provide expertise, information, studies and resources that add a tremendous value to the decisions code officials make as part of the ICC code development process. Ernest Mitchell, Jr. is FEMA's Fire Administrator for the United States Fire Administration. He began his tenure in December of last year. His responsibilities include the programs and training activities at the National Emergency Training Center. After 33 years in the fire service, he retired as fire chief and assistant director of disaster emergency services for Pasadena, California. He was an active member and former officer of the International Association of Fire Chiefs and served as a member of the International Fire Service Training Association Executive Board. And uh, the International Association of Firefighters Hazardous Materials Advisory Board. He has advocated on behalf of the National Fallen Firefighters Everyone Goes Home program and was an instructor for the National Fire Academy. Chief Mitchell has earned several awards for service, including the 2012 Lifetime Achievement Award from the IAFC Black Chief Officers. Please join me in welcoming Ernest Mitchell, Jr., Fire Administrator of the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, I get to thank you. Yeah, please do. Good evening. And I want to give my thanks to President Duffler, the Board of Directors, and all of the staff of the ICC. As you know, as was explained to you, I am the administrator of the United States Fire Administration, and we work for, the, for FEMA as part of the Department of Homeland Security. And this evening, I'm here to share with you some of our activities that are related to code development, code adoption, and code administration. Before that, I get into that, I'd like to give you just a little background about myself and where it relates to codes and fire prevention activities, and say that I, I served in the fire service in California for over 33 years. My first 20 years were in a department where I served in the Fire Prevention Bureau for nine of those years. And for six of those years, I was a fire marshal. During that time, I worked on the old Uniform Fire Code, uh, Article 80, Hazardous Materials Section. And I was chief during the time that California was going through a struggle to decide 
which code it was going to adopt and that somewhat tumultuous time between NFPA and the ICC. Uh, at that time, in fact, I was president of the Los Angeles Area Fire Chiefs Association and had to sort of mediate between fire chiefs and their fire marshals over which code was going to be preferred. So another benefit during that time is that I worked closely with an official, a supporter of the ICC who was the chief building official in Pasadena, and that was Bob Fowler. And one of the things that Bob and I would sit and talk about were performance-based codes. Pasadena was going through a transition from an old-style mall to a new pedestrian-friendly, open-air environment type of mall. In order to make that a successful development, we needed to be able to make it safe, but do it in a fashion that would allow the development to take place. And so Bob and I sat for many hours really discussing how we would do that in a way that would be safe for the public and safe for the firefighters in the event there was an emergency there. And what I found during that time and others is that that working together between the fire official and the building official and other officials really made us and our product and our ability to make the public safer, stronger, and, and allowed all of us to benefit our communities and this country as a whole. We are in the business of saving lives. As we have labeled some of us, we are, we in the prevention world, the cold world in different ways, we are the, what we call the first preventers. And so, as such, we are part of the same family and this opportunity now for us to work together. So with that context, I'd like to show you some of what we at the international, at the U.S. Fire Administration do. What you see on the screen now should be FEMA's mission, and it talks about supporting our citizens and first responders to ensure that as a nation, we build, sustain, and improve our capability for disasters. What you do directly supports that effort. What you do in partner and what we do in partnership with you allows us to better protect the public and to be more effective. Model code development, adoption, and administration is essential, as you know, to public safety. And so we at the Fire Administration are the link to the fire service in that, in that way. We are also the link to much of the code development process. And it is our intent to continue and to expand upon working with code developers and code organizations. And I was especially pleased to hear, after working through California's processes, about the partnership that the ICC and NFPA form to move forward into current codes and to support that. And we are prepared to fully support that, and we just thank you for that initiative. For those that don't know, the United States Fire Administration was created in 1974 by statute, given that we had so many losses of lives to fires during those times. At that time, we were losing about 12,000 people in, in fires in this country annually. And four basic methods and initiatives were set forward for us to work on those to reduce that number. Data collection and analysis, public education and awareness, applied research and technology, and training. Those were our original four stars, as we call them. Today we've added another part that's more directly aligned with FEMA's mission, and that is technical assistance with respect to disaster response or emergency response. What we do today, what you help us to do today, what you support our efforts in today, and what we are working with you to do is achieve goal number one in our strategic plan, which is to reduce fire and life safety risk through preparedness, prevention, and mitigation. And I cannot stress enough the importance of adopting the most up-to-date codes and standards. Up-to-date codes and standards are the cornerstone of risk reduction for us. 
and we serve in a liaison role to work with you. We don't have any regulatory authority, and our staff says, thank goodness. But we, what we are in a position to do is to work as liaisons in, in model code development and with organizations such as yours to support uh, the process and uh, in ways that have no other agenda than to protect the public. Our primary vehicle of doing that at the USFA is through the National Fire Academy. Some of you, and speaking to you here, have been there. And there we do that in two primary ways. We teach courses in fire management and in fire prevention that are technical. Examples of those courses are residential sprinkler plan review, a two-day course, and commissioning new occupancies for code officials. We serve on campus and in the state programs about 800 students per year in these courses. And they're open not just to fire officials, but also to building officials. Most of the new courses that we're developing at the National Fire Academy are in, the, in these areas. Managing fire prevention programs, which is for the chief and fire marshal level overview of life, safety, and public policy, which is our strategies for success building support for community risk reduction, which is just the fu fundamental foundations for developing your own community risk reduction strategies in your communities. And then community risk reduction model programs, where we expose the students to the programs that are effective and in use all around this country. Other new courses and areas, the unique area of campus fire and life safety, where we, are, we have developed courses for that and its unique challenges hazardous materials for inspectors, not for people that want to be inspectors, but for active inspectors so that they are better equipped and better able to perform. Water-based fire protection system plan review, something that's rarely given at the local level, that people are cast in the position of inspecting plans without real training, and so we assist in that way. And wildland urban interface codes, which is an area that today the fires in wildland urban interface areas is, is growing. I know coming out of California, that's where most development was. It was my own experience that the use of some of the early ICC wildland urban interface codes was essential to me when I worked in the city of Monrovia, the city of Pasadena, both cities with interface zones. And both were tremendous improvements on the existing codes at that time. In order to serve more in the protection and enforcement community, we are increasing the online courses at the Fire Administration. Principles of building construction, history, and so forth that you see in the slide, those are courses now that students can get online. We're also working to develop mediated courses where there's an instructor that interacts with the students online. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Khan Academy, that's K-A-H-N as in Khan, who has a number, hundreds of courses online in small video formats in a variety of subjects for students. And we're looking at ways to do that with some of our, our courses. One tremendous innovation has been these coffee break trainings. And you may say, well, why is he telling us all about all of this stuff that's going on at the U.S. Fire Administration? And one of those reasons is that I want, I'm hoping to stimulate thoughts in each of you as to how we might work together on some of these things. So please keep in mind the idea is to let you know what we do in hopes that we can work e together even more. But coffee break trainings are like 10-minute online courses that someone can review in a break. You can maybe read some of the things on that list uh, about fire e egress, fire dynamics, to the point where the person that developed that for us is receiving the FEMA Administrator's Award for Innovation next month, because it's also now being used at the Emergency Management Institute. And he, he although he created this almost seven years ago, uh, the recognition is coming because now it's taking off. In addition to the Fire Academy, we have national fire programs. 
The National Fire Programs is the arm that does the data collection. Some of you are familiar with INFERS. And so we collect all the fire data and do analysis for the country. And we also partner in various research uh, activities and studies to improve firefighter safety uh, and citizen safety and building safety. For an example, we have just completed a project with Oak Ridge Laboratories on a smarter home smoke alarm, one that actually has a chip that can distinguish between a non-hazardous fire in the home versus a hostile fire in the home. The idea being to cut down on false alarms. They've also incorporated it into that a uh, better sounding technology that through different studies we know works better for the elderly and for the very young. And we have found it alerts them quicker in times that they are asleep. We are working through various national laboratories to address needs and technology and advances. And even though we continue to work that, you and I know that residential fire sprinklers really are the key to eliminating or at least reducing losses of life in residential fires. It's a proven technology, but it needs a broader application. It is our intention in the future to work with you and the fire and safety community in a deeper way, in a more invested way, in order to make that reality. Some of our past projects with residential sprinklers has been providing funds for sprinkler research, participating in the consensus standards, and now we are seeking to just increase our visibility and our activity in supporting that use. We also have references for code enforcers that we give general information and, and, and respond to questions, usually making them familiar with the particular authority having the appropriate jurisdiction and sending them to that place and those people for the answers or referring them to the ICC. We have a number of research initiatives working with others. We've partnered with the American Wood Council. They have a web-based program that instructs firefighters in structural behavior under fire conditions. And so much of what we do along research lines is done in partnership. And I say all that and all these and this little snippet of what we are doing to give you some sampling of what we're doing and hope that you will contact us with your ideas and your ways for us to partner and reduce our fire problem. For it is our vision to have a safer America, a fire safe America. And we believe that by working together, we can in fact accomplish that. Our latest project, which we are undertaking and which you should be hearing more about in the near future, is a project called Fire is Everyone's Fight. And that is not to say that everyone grab a fire hose or a fire extinguisher and, and put out fires. It is to say that we, in our various occupations and, and in our various places, all have a role to play. Citizens can do a better job at preventing fires in their homes. They can plan two ways out. They can do their part. The fire departments can do their, tar their part. The code adoption officials can do their part. And we, wanted, we are working with agencies across the country to tell them about this fire problem. There's still hundreds of thousands of home fires. Those home fires result in 81% of the fire deaths in the United States, 76% of the injuries due to fire in the United States all occur in the place that we feel is the safest in our homes. And it is our intent to recognize that we are in a battle. We are in a continuous battle, and we want to call everyone to action. We've talked with the marketers, and we've talked with the branders, and they say to us that this slogan, fire is everyone's fight, is one that will stick and resonate in people's minds. Kind of like stop, drop, and roll, or as Smokey used to say, only you can prevent forest fires. So fire is everyone's fight is our latest attempt to brand that into people's minds and have them to remember that. So this gives you some overview of what we are doing 
with codes, we want you to know that your efforts are essential to what we do, are very supportive of what we do, and it is our total intention to support you and join with you in what you're doing. I here have a slide of our wonderful work site in Emmitsburg, Maryland, that I only get to visit about once a week, twice if I'm lucky. My, my offices are downtown in the District of Columbia, some call the District of Confusion, and FEMA headquarters. But what I do want to say to you right now is that on behalf, seriously, on behalf of President Obama and Secretary, Secretary Napolitano and FEMA Administrator Fugate, we do appreciate being invited tonight that I'm able to share this with you. We do appreciate what you're doing. I congratulate you on a successful and enjoyable conference. I, I only ask that you continue to do what you're doing and reaching out to us, and we'll continue reaching out to you. I truly thank you for your efforts. And I want to leave you with one message, one last message that, that I find uh, somewhat uh, energizing for me in our battle against fires, in our, in our efforts for public safety, and yes, even in our facing up to the tremendous bureaucracy at times that's in, 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 in Washington. And that is just a short poem by John Wesley, who says to us all, which I think is a, a, an absolutely great message for public safety, is to do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways that you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. And that, if I leave you with nothing else I would like to say, is what we, many of us, have been doing for a long time. I encourage you to keep fighting the good fight. Fire is everyone's fight. I encourage you to participate with us as we participate with you. And I thank you and wish you the best in all of the remainder of this evening and the conference. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Chief Mitchell. We are very honored that you could join us and appreciate the professional relationship between FEMA and the Code Council. We obviously have a shared vision for our communities. And I hope you all were listening. Remember, building and fire together for a safe, site-built environment. Thank you. You can. Now I'd like to also take a moment to thank the American Gas Association for its generous sponsorship. AGA is one of our founding strategic partners. With their support, the ICC vision, mission, and code development process are working to improve, toward improving public safety in the built environment. Thank you, AGA. We hope to have your support again next year in Atlantic City. That's right. Now I want to thank Target for its years of sponsorship of the Code Council's annual conference and their groundbreaking work. Hold on. There's a the new program they're going, and I hope some of you heard about it. They have groundbreaking work on a new program to help empower code officials, empower you out there by developing the next generation of educational opportunities. You heard from Tom Phillips about the beginning of this effort at Monday's opening session. We are excited about our strength and collaboration at our next conference and in the years ahead. Our strategic partners include the American Institute of Architects, the Building Owners and Managers Association, the National Association of Home Builders, the National Association of National Multi-Housing Council, and of course, as I mentioned, AGA. I know that Richard Greninger, the chair-elect of BOMA, and Dave Collins with AIA are here with us tonight. If you could please stand up and be recognized. All 
our strategic partners have publicly stated their support for the I codes and lend their resources to achieving code adoptions, we appreciate their support. Now, it's probably totally unnecessary, but I hope you are all enjoying your dinner now. We're going to take a brief pause. But before you do, I want to relate not a joke. This is not funny at all. This is a story. You know, as I mentioned before, Bill and Janet spent a lot of their time, personal time, with ICC. And Bill really needed to do something special for Janet's birthday. So he asked her what she would like. And Janet said, well, I'd, like to be a, I'd like to be six again. So Bill, thinking about this, went ahead and planned a very special birthday. He picked her up in the morning, took her out to an amusement park. They went on the whirly gigs. They went on the roller coasters. They went on the carousels. They ate the funnel cakes, the popcorn, the, the cotton candy, all that fried Twinkie stuff. Oh, God. Everything. Then as a special treat on the way home, they stopped at McDonald's and got a kid's meal with extra milkshake and french fries. And finally, they enjoyed the evening with a Disney movie. And as Janet was stumbling into bed, totally exhausted, she said, what was that all for, Bill? And Bill said, well, you wanted to be six again. Wasn't that fantastic? And she said, you idiot. I wanted to be a size six again. <laughs> Proving one thing, that even when a man listens, he gets it wrong. Thank you. Right in.
All right, no problem. Got it, no problem. Thank you. Well, I hope you all enjoyed dinner. Oh, good, I get a clap for dinner. I like that, I like that. You can all participate in that. Then. If you have not finished eating, please continue. We will, of course, speak right over you whenever possible. So we're gonna resume this evening's agenda because we are gonna get done on time, I promise you. The chapter Pay It Forward program is an ICC tradition and a gesture of goodwill by our chapters that make donations to next year's conference host chapter. The donations help to underwrite expenses incurred in providing hospitality functions. Pay It Forward is an excellent way for all chapters to support future ICC conferences. A list of donors is being shown on the screen and we thank them for their generosity. I hear no music, but I would appreciate if Melanie Adams, president of the Oregon Building Officials Association and chair of the host chapters committee, representing all of the Northwest ICC chapters, could come forward to say a few words. Please. You look ravishing. Too, by the way. I asked for the 007 music. I wanted that too. Hi everybody. Are you having a good time? <laughs> On behalf of the Oregon Building Officials Association, we are so glad to see all of you and we hope you've had a great time here in Portland. It's been our pleasure to be your hosts and, uh, and I'm so grateful for all of you being here tonight and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Portland. Um, we have up on, oh no, that's me. <laughs> Where are all of our generous sponsors? They're supposed to be up here. All right, we're gonna do this the old fashioned way. In order to make a successful event, it takes a lot of teamwork. And so right now, if you are representative of one of the chapters or jurisdictions who donated to us under the Pay It Forward program or for any other reason, I'd like you to come stand right here while I'm speaking. Will you do that for me, please? All of you who donated, please come up. And while you're walking up, there's gonna be a lot of standing and clapping, I'm just gonna warn you right now. So uh, you put down your fork, put down your knife. If you intend to pay it forward to Atlantic City, come up here as well. Everyone who is going to donate to Atlantic City, please join us up here. And our Atlantic City host committee, you come up here too. Come on, everybody up, let's go. All right, well, we have everybody walking up here. And first of all, can you believe this? Look at this, look at this. Is this cool or what? Talk about a team. 
All right, I, and I'm gonna have more people standing up. I'm gonna have y'all standing up before this night is over. So we have some very important people sitting at a couple of tables up here, and I'd like to uh, ask our key planning team committee members and chairs to please stand right now and be recognized. Come on, guys, have, stand up. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much. Stay standing, please. I'd like the board of directors of the Oregon Building Officials Association to stand next. They have had to listen to me for a long time now, and we appreciate them for doing that. Thank you all. Please stay standing. Please stay standing. If you are a member of the Oregon Building Officials Association, please stand right now. Let's see you. And finally, I'd like to recognize the long-suffering folks from the city of Hillsboro, my jurisdiction, who had to put up with me for the last six months planning this event and probably are really glad it's over. You're from the city of Hillsboro. Guys, please stand up, be recognized. Thank you. So when I say it took a team to put an event like this together. Here's our team, guys. Thank you so much. So while I've been here, I've had the opportunity to talk with our friends from the great state of Tennessee. And I have discovered that back in 2003, a tradition was started with Pay It Forward, that the Tennessee building officials were to convey every year a check and a bottle of Jack Daniels. And I have Mr. Denny Boss here to make that annual traditional presentation. Mr. Boss, sir. Thank you. For those that don't know, this started back in 03 with my good friend Terry Cobb, and we had some funds left over, and he said we need to make sure that the next year is successful. So we gave a check to the host chapter, and I believe it was Utah, and uh, a bottle of Jack Daniels. So, Tom, I'd like Thank to you. continue the tradition. Here's your bottle of Jack Daniels, and we will be sending you all a check for $1,000. Thank you. And I, and I understand that I'm not allowed to open this until next conference. Yes, next conference. Great right to see you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, you may all sit down. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're very grateful for all of the donations that we received, and I'm very pleased to say that the Oregon Building Officials Association will be paying forward the same amount that we received from our friends in Arizona last year, $18,500 to Atlantic City. Right now, I need to call our past president of Oregon Building Officials Association, Dan Carlson, up. You remember Dan from Phoenix last year. We have had a raffle going on with OBOA. This is for our foundation work. We do some charitable work. We give back to the community. We think that's an important part of what we do. And uh, so as part of our OBOA foundation work, we have been raffling off an iPad. Dan, please give me the apple so that I may raffle it off. Seriously? The iPad, Dan, the iPad. <sighs> All right. We have a beautiful new iPad 
Thank you to all of you who donated and bought a raffle ticket. It is going to go to charitable works throughout the community here in the great state of Oregon, and we very much appreciate it. All right, here we go. Let's see what it is. All right, you are all standing here, and you saw that I did not cheat, right? Right? There's no, there's no cheating. Jim Sayers, come up here. Jim actually bought 200 tickets, so that worked out well for him. <laughs> Thank you so much to all of you who have purchased raffle tickets or purchased t-shirts. We sincerely appreciate it because it allows us to give back to the community, and that's a priority for us as building officials. We have quite a few t-shirts, those beautiful Planet Northwest t-shirts with our special logo that is one of a kind and you'll never see again. Those are also on clearance, right, Mr. Carlson? Those are on clearance and you'll be able to purchase those up till about 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for $10? $10, what a bargain. Again, all of those dollars go back to charitable works. So thank you and, uh, and we appreciate that. My time is about up, and I just want to say again how grateful we are for the opportunity to make so many new friends. It's been such a pleasure getting to know all of you, and we can't wait to see you in Atlantic City. Thank you so much, and have a great evening. Thank you very much. Wonderful job. Wonderful. Thank you, Melanie, for your leadership and all you have done as chair of the host chapter committee. And thank you again to the Oregon Building Officials Association and the chapters of the Northwest for a job well done. At this time, I would like to invite our board president, Bill Dupler, to come forward and present the Bobby J. Fowler Award and the President's Award. William? It's all yours. Thank you, Ron. Bobby J. Fowler is the most prestigious award presented by the International Code Council. The award honors the memory of the first chairman of the International Code Council Board of Directors. In 2012, the recipient of the Fowler Award is James Tim Ryan, my friend, a certified building official and code administrator in Overland Park, Kansas, Building and Safety Division. Earlier in the week, you got to know a little bit about Tim during the video presentation at our opening session. It truly has been my friend to know Tim as a colleague. We serve together on both the ICC and the Boca boards, and I know he views what he does for a living as a very noble profession, not just a job. Tim sets the bar high. Please join me in welcoming Tim Ryan, the 2012 Bobby Fowler Award recipient. Tim.
first of all, uh, thank Ron Lynn for having the drink up here. Um, it's it's uh, pretty nerve-wracking to be up here. Uh, when I was chairman of the awards committee for a number of years, it was always easier to be giving it out than, than the position I'm in now to receiving it, because uh, I'm about as nervous as I've ever been right now. I don't have a lot of time, so I want to get to some thank yous and then some comments about Bob Fowler. Uh, the thank yous, uh, first of all, to Chairman Anderson and the awards committee and to uh, Bill and the board of directors, thank you so much for bestowing this honor on me. It is truly a great honor. And I'm still trying to get my mind around it about how big of an honor this is. Um, I want to thank the, the organization I work for, the City of Overland Park. It's the greatest organization in the world to be a, be a codes administrator on. Um, my mayor, my city council, my city manager, my director. Uh, in the 34 years I've been with the City of Overland Park, uh, they've always embraced building safety. They've always made sure that uh, we had the resources, the budget, the things that we needed to do, what we needed to do to ensure the safety of our citizens. Jerry Anderson, my right-hand man, is sitting down here. Uh, has been with me a number of years. Um, um, I cannot tell you how much my staff means to me. Uh, they're so important. Uh, some individuals I want to thank. Um, Henry Green, who's in the audience, uh, the president of the National Institute of Building Sciences. Henry and I have been together a long time. Uh, he's taught me as much as, as I ever knew about uh, uh, embracing people and, and good communication and, and, and finding the win-win in everything that we do. Uh, and Henry's doing some great things with the Institute and a lot of what we're doing there parallels what ICC is doing, so stay tuned there. Uh, to Paul Heilstead, uh, pa Paul's not here, but Paul was the CEO of Boca. Um, at a very young stage of my career, Paul taught me what it meant to be a board member, um, not just showing up for the meetings, but coming to the meetings prepared to be engaged. You know, when you come to a board meeting, if you just sit there, you're kind of on the sidelines. And he taught me that you got to get in the game. Uh, you got to participate. You got to go out and you got to do your work. You got to do your homework. You got to come prepared. Um, Jerry Jones, uh, our award is named after Jerry. I talked to Jerry today. He uh, sends his appreciation and says hi to everybody. Uh, what an icon he has been uh, to have been lucky enough to serve under somebody like Jerry who taught me the value in doing what we do every day, how important that is to our constituencies and our citizens, and not only serving at the local level, but how important it is for the volunteerism that this organization embraces uh, to get involved at all levels of, of code enforcement and codes administration. To my family, uh, we're best friends. Uh, we celebrate each other's accomplishments. Uh, my kids are phenomenal. Uh, my, grandson, my grandson is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, to my wife, uh, Mary, who's over here, hopefully everybody gets to meet her. Uh, she's been the love of my life for 34 years. She's been my best friend. Um, and she has been a role model to me as well. Um, I don't know that she knows that, but she's my best friend. So thank you. <laughs> Bob Fowler was truly visionary. I knew Bob. I didn't know him well, but I did know him. Uh, I had conversations with Bob. And being a true visionary, one of Bob's strengths was that he embraced other visionaries and brought them into his fold, into his little army of visionaries when we created this organization. People like Bill Tangy, Paul Heilstead, John Tra, Gerard Garofalo, Alan Olson, George Walker, and then he sent them out amongst the rest of us to um, get us involved and to show us the importance of creating a single organization or at least at the time a single set of codes. And as you look back on what he accomplished, there was really three phases of our evolution to get to where we are today. The first one was the consolidation of the codes. And if you remember, and I'll remind you at the time, that's all we were talking about. We were only talking about consolidating the codes. There was no conversations about merging organizations or anything else. 
And I think Bob and his little army of visionaries uh, were smart enough for the rest of us to know, well, if we get the ball rolling down the hill with consolidation of the codes, hopefully that the rest of us would be smart enough to fill in the blanks and keep it rolling. We got the codes consolidated. We, we created a single set of codes. And at the time, we thought that was the most difficult thing we had to do. Then came the merger of the organizations. And if you look back on that, that made merging the codes seem pretty easy. Okay? We merged those organizations. We, three, we took three competitors and we threw them together and said, here it is, now you're one organization. And when you look back on it, the second phase seemed harder than the first phase, and it was. So what's the third phase the, where we're at? To me, the third phase is truly bringing together the membership, the individuals. And that's been a little bit tougher. But I will use my nomination for this award as an example of where we're at. Um, a very dear friend of mine uh, basically said, well, you probably shouldn't say who nominated you, so I'll, I'll keep that to myself because that's very special. But the key part of, the, part of this story is, is that the people who nominated me, they came from different cult code cultures. They came from different regions. And they are even different than the culture that I came from. And one of the individuals I was talking to yesterday that nominated me, I was talking to him and he said, you know, when I first met you, I didn't like you very much. <laughs> and, you know, when you first hear that, it kind of stings a little bit, but I respect him because he's honest. And what's important about this story is that's probably true if you look at the people next to you in this room, the table next to you. If you came from ICBO or Boca or Southern, at the time we were merging, we probably didn't like each other very much. And now look at us. Look at the people next to you. Not only have we come together as colleagues, but the people that nominated me, I can sit here and I can tell you, they're some of my best friends in the world. They're not just colleagues, they're not just people that I can call up. They are truly, truly my friends. And why is that important? It's important because this organization has a lot of things in front of it. You nominated and you elected a new board of directors yesterday. You also have a gentleman by the name of Dominic Sims who's in a new role with this organization as your interim CEO. We got a lot of challenges ahead of us. You know, we got budgetary problems, we got membership issues, and the list goes on and on and on. And what I will do with this nomination on this award is I will challenge you, the membership, to help them out because they're going to need it. And Bob Fowler was, was credited with a very, very uh, in, uh, critical saying that he, that, that he said often. And he would always say, you know, our job is to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Well, I challenge you, the membership, let's don't be part of the problem. Let's help our board, let's help Dominic solve the problems before this, this organization. Thank you very much and good night. Tim, thank you for that message from the heart. It was well spoken and so appropriate today. Our best wishes to you and Mary and your family, and we wish you congratulations again, and thank you for your warm remarks. And now the moment I've been waiting for for a long time. No, no, we're not switching roles just yet. But you know, every president gets to give an award. And at the discretion of the ICC board president, an individual may be honored with an award from the president. The award is based on a selection by the president of a recipient truly worthy of special recognition for service to the International Code Council. I have selected my own recipient this year for the 2012 President's Award. He is an ICC member who exemplifies dedication to our profession, one who freely 
shares his knowledge and professional experience with others. He is a member who truly believes in the importance of our mission and educating others. Likewise, he continually motivates and challenges those around him to do the same. As a member, he never sought elected office in any of our associations. He has mentored three chapter presidents. He has served the unique and trusted role as my confidant and advisor. Furthermore, as a member, he has served on numerous numerous residential code development committees supporting our code development process by reviewing literally thousands of code change proposals. By now, some of you have likely figured out who this award is to be presented to. So without further ado, it is with my sincere gratitude and in recognition of all he has done to support our association, as well as countless individuals and ICC members I am privileged, pleased, and thrilled to present the 2012 President's Award to my colleague and one of my mentors, Roger Robertson. Roger had no idea why I snuck him down here with his wife, and Roger is preparing to retire and just thought we'd come down here for one more meeting with the Code Council and see what it was like and see me off. Roger, the floor is yours. I want you to know, Bill, I really owe you. <laughs> and uh, payback, sir, you know what they are. Well. I'm truly surprised with this. I, I'm, I'm unbelievably stunned. I have those of you who know me, who, uh, who particularly those in my uh, home state, know that I always have a, uh, a list of jokes to tell. Well, I'm, I'm jokeless. <laughs> I'm really, <laughs> I'm really stunned. I'm honored. I'm humbled uh, uh, and surprised about this. Uh, I did not prepare for any code changes this cycle. <laughs> And, and I know that uh, a lot of you are breathing a sigh of relief because of that. Um, but uh, I, I'm just uh, absolutely humbled, uh, and I do appreciate it, Bill, and thank you. And I, I really do love the process, uh, the code development process, and I suppose if I have any advice um, for those who may, coming, may be coming along, it's just, it's just don't give up on the process. It really works carry it through and it'll work for you and I thank you. Thank you, Bill. We don't want to knock over Ron's drink. All right, we're all worried about Ron's drink up here, so Ron, would you hurry up and drink that thing? <laughs> President elect Ron Peaster, would you please join us at the podium? And my lovely wife, Janet, would you please join us at the podium? <laughs> Took my line. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming up here. Where's Janet? Where is she? Oh, there she comes. It's tough walking up those stairs in a dress. I know I've tried many times. <laughs> okay, Ron Peaster, why don't you step up? I think you're next up here. Okay. So get up here. <clears throat> Bill, the ICC staff would like to express its appreciation to you and Janet in the form of a marine stereo receiver with an iPod dock and an iPod touch for your enjoyment. And the ICC staff is also presenting you with a travel certificate for use anywhere in the United States. In addition, the Board of Directors wishes to express its appreciation 
and presents a gift certificate to West Marine back home so that you can get started working on your boat this winter. <laughs> Bill? Thank you. Thank you. Are you supposed to say something? I don't know. I hey, think it's, it's Ron Lynn. If there are any other presentations to the President, they are welcomed at this time. Please come forward. Anybody out there? Because I have a presentation, if no one else, but I'm not sure they want that one. <laughs> oh, here we do. Thank you very much. I, I just need to follow behind Mr. Peaster. Um, and quickly say on behalf of the building officials of New York State, we heard a lot about great code uh, mentors. I believe this gentleman will go down in history as one of the best. Uh, I'm very proud to stand here. He, it's very comforting to know that someone of this caliber was behind us and very quickly tried to do something that would comfort him, and we're going to add $300 to that little fund for his fishing boat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What you all really don't know is, I bought the boat with Janet's permission, and she thinks of it as her boat. <laughs> Bill, on behalf of the Virginia chapters of the ICC, we provide you this little token of appreciation for a job well done. right up here. Don't spill my drink now. Here, we won't spill it. Everybody. I think it's just water. Please. A most distinguished honor. Ah, thank you. Well, Ron, I've been able to present this award with you uh, a couple of times, and it's always a pleasure and an honor. And, um, you know, we've been up here a couple times, and you still look the same. You still look great. I know you've been working out. I saw you at the gym the other day. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Brene. Yeah. Um, yeah, in fact, the other day I was asking a fellow, how do I get a chance to know you? What machine do I need to work out that will impress you? And he told me the ATM machine. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Ron Tabor. I am the past president for the Code Administrators Association of Kentucky. And tonight I want to bestow on uh, Bill an honor that uh, has been presented, as she said, for this is my third time. So this particular honor is awarded by the Commonwealth of Kentucky and is that of a Kentucky Colonel. I am recognized as Colonel Ron Tabor. Thank you. <laughs> well, let me give you a little history. It all began with Kentucky's first uh, governor, whose son was the colonel of his staff. I don't have this to read up here, so I've got to read down this way. The governor later issued commissions to all who enlisted in his regiment in the War of 1812. Subsequently, Kentucky governors commissioned colonels to be their protective guards in the presence of most functions. The official Honorable Order of Kentucky Colonels was founded in 1932 and has since been incorporated as a charitable organization. Through the years, Kentucky Colonels have contributed thousands upon thousands of dollars to worthy causes. Kentucky's Governor and Lieutenant Governor serve as Commander-in-Chief and Deputy Commander-in-Chief. Kentucky Colonelships are commissioned for an individual's contributions to his or her community, state, or nation, and for special achievements. With your achievements as a Kentucky Colonel, the Governor of Kentucky recognizes your services and your accomplishments on behalf of others. The certificates signed by the Governor and Secretary of State 
and bearing the great seal of Kentucky has hung on the walls of such distinguished leaders as President Lyndon Baines Johnson, English Prime Minister Winston Churchill, John Glenn was commissioned during his historic mission while orbiting the Earth. Other well-known colonels include, you'll love this, Colonel Harlan Sanders, <laughs> Muhammad Ali, actors Betty White, Bob Hope, Clark Gable, George Clooney, Ashley Judd, Johnny Depp, Turtle Man. <laughs> Turtle Man? <laughs> you watched it, haven't you? Every redneck knows him. <laughs> uh, people such as uh, Kenny Perry, uh, Elvis Preston, Mel Tillis, Barry Manilow, on and on. In fact, we've been fortunate enough just last week. Uh, no. <laughs> Alex Cash, all Chevy from Kentucky. So with this distinguished honor, to you, William D. Duper, the Honorable Order of Kentucky Colonels on this, the 24th, October 2012, we present this to you, sir. Thank you, Thank you so much, Colonel. And just so it's understood on the pay it forward, we will be donating Woodford Reserve. That will take care of the people in Tennessee who want to wash their feet. Can I go down now? Oh, not more. Can I go down For you, Bill. Can I go down now? No. Well, these, are, these would look much better on Janet. No, I'm good. No, no, no. Yes, you can. You can, Janet. Yeah. You can step there. You can step there. Thank you. I'll do it right. Bill, you know we can't allow you to leave the office of president without a reflection on the past. We have one last presentation. Please roll the video. Bill, we can sit over here. Put drink in my drink. I always tried to uh, reflect on what was the best decision for the association as a whole, not from individual constituents, not from my own perspective, but the association as a whole. People who choose to participate in the code development process are going to have to do their best to become informed about the issues and reflect on those issues and make a decision that is in the best interest of their community. Uh, because that's what we're relying on, and that's what our process has always relied on. You know, uh, people may not realize this, but I came to this job through the fire service. My interest, uh, in fact, was in uh, fire protection as a volunteer firefighter. And I came to my first code hearing in 1979 uh, and began observing and testifying on code changes. And that's really what uh, caused my interest to grow. I think fire and building officials share uh, a lot of mutual goals that are sometimes unrecognized. No one's against safe buildings. It doesn't matter who they are. Um, everybody can identify with safety. I think the biggest challenge for our members is to stay focused on what's best for the overall benefit of the association. It's certainly been something that, uh, that members come to me and talk to me about. Um, and it's certainly something that I've tried to remind them. I firmly believe that electronic participation in co-development activities is what the future is all about. My vision for CDP Access is that uh, all of our members will have access to the code development process to the extent they want to participate. I love people. I like dealing and interacting with people. Uh, I have learned an awful lot from the Code Council staff. 
um, and it helps me uh, identify with them and relate to what they do on the job. Um, and I think people just deserve to be recognized uh, for their commitment. Really the best thing about the Code Council is uh, it's offered a great opportunity to network. It's offered a great opportunity for me to grow in my career. Uh, I've been exposed to things uh, working as a, a member of committees that I would never be exposed to back home. It's also paid great dividends for my community. I've been exposed to uh, things, uh, developing trends in the industry that I could apply in my job here. Uh, I've been involved in all kinds of things that maybe are non-traditional, but our members are involved in. It's been great to travel with Janet, also to have Maggie come to the conference uh, in the last year or two. We've done this for a long time, and we always enjoy going and seeing everybody and, you know, so. We've got, we've got some lifelong friends out there from this. You know, we keep in touch. I've really enjoyed my service to the Code Council as the president, but frankly, I am looking forward to uh, stepping back um, and to participating as a regular member in the activities of the Code Council. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, it's time to get some new folks in here, see what, uh, you know, what difference they can make and work on supporting them. And that's what I look forward to doing. And now, Bill, the microphone is going to be yours to share your farewell thoughts as the president of the International Code Council Board of Directors. My good friend, peace and love. Brother Bill. Thank you. And I'm taking my drink. Before I begin, let me say thank you to everyone who expressed their well wishes this week for the special gifts and honors and yes, for allowing me to join the ranks of Colonel Sanders and my favorite TV personality, the Tetral Man. What is it, live action? Ay -ay 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 I never thought I'd be doing that up here, but oh well. And now on a more serious note, it's been my privilege to be welcomed by so many of you throughout the past year. Whether it was in person, via webcast, glitches and all, or over the phone. Thank you so much for your interest in the Code Council. I'll always cherish my opportunities to meet with and hear from the members across the country and around the world. Together, we have celebrated many accomplishments and renewed partnerships. Likewise, I have enjoyed my time with my fellow board members immensely. They are an awesome team dedicated to the success of our association. Thank you to the entire board and the executive committee. You made my job much easier, more challenging, much harder, sometimes really crazy, but you also made my job fun. I will always value the mutual camaraderie that we shared. Your board of directors has worked hard together as a true team with resolve and determination to position the Code Council for continued success. In addition, I have appreciated greatly working with and getting to know more of the Code Council staff. You know, they are awesome, tireless workers who truly deserve our recognition. Thank you for accepting me as one of you, Code Council staff. Together, we have successfully implemented the Year of the Member it was an initiative that now challenges Ron Peaster as he steps into the presidency. Good luck, Ron, coming up with a better theme for next year, because what's better than the year of the member? <laughs> the membership councils have really come into their own this year. Each and every one has developed programs and represented their perspectives to the board of directors based on your input as members. We found opportunities to work together with the National Fire Protection Association on a number of initiatives this year, including establishment of the Coalition for Current Safety Codes. 
Our CDP access project is off to a great start, especially based on your interest and your comments. We started down a path recently to recommit ICC to its core functions of codes and standards development, as well as the support for their application. And your executive committee and board has begun by asking a number of questions. How can we best support our core mission, that of codes and standards development? What do you, our members, need and want? How can we ensure the financial health of the association going forward? And what is in the best interest of our association as a whole body? Together, these questions that Ron will now take up will allow us to reconnect with our code official member base and ensure we focus on our primary mission. We have broadened our focus into a number of new and related fields over the last 10 years. Our focus going forward will be on restoring a more balanced approach based on our core mission and you, yes, you, our members. You will hear shortly from your newly elected president, Mr. Peaster, about his plans to unify the membership around the singular goal of helping the ICC protect and strengthen our communities. No president can serve our association without the support of others. I am indeed debted, indebted to my colleagues in Chesterfield County who are seated at the tables in the front. My fellow board members, our dedicated Code Council staff for their support, assistance, and guidance that all of you have provided me during my service. And I ask that all of you, both my staff from Chesterfield County, my wife and daughter, and the Code Council staff, as well as the Board of Directors, please stand and be recognized at this time. Your involvement and commitment, dedication to our association has made my service that much more memorable. And finally, I couldn't do this again without getting another word in for my beautiful, wonderful wife, Janet. as well as our exuberant daughter, Maggie, who I understand has been entertaining members of the Board of Directors and staff till the wee hours of the morning this week. <laughs> you know, you heard we've celebrated anniversaries. It's true. It seems there was just a conspiracy to always have a meeting when we were having an anniversary. But Janet has been with me every step of the way sometimes literally, sometimes a step behind, hopefully a step ahead, and sometimes in spirit. Janet and Maggie, I would ask that you again please stand and be recognized. Thank you so much for allowing me to spend time with something I truly love just as much as you. It's been a true honor for me to give back to my profession through service to you, the members of the International Code Council. I now look forward to welcoming our new leadership and offering my support as the Code Council moves into its second successful decade. Ron, Steve, Guy and the entire board that you have elected are an awesome team that will guide our association. Thank you to all of you, the members, for making the Code Council what it was, what it is now, and what it will be. Thank you and God bless all of you.
Bill, I know it is an awesome responsibility to serve as the President of the International Code Council. But as you mentioned in your speech, you always gave credit to the team for a job well done, and you never shied away from the many challenges. I believe I speak for all of us, both all of us here and throughout the ICC family. For your thanks, thank you for your leadership, your inspiration, and your dedication to the members of this association. Again, thank you, Bill. Would immediate past president Jimmy Brothers join us on the stage? That's you, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tisa. Thank you. That's slapping money. Jimmy's trying to derail me one last time, <laughs> but it can't happen because I got it all up here on the teleprompter. Jimmy, this is your last Code Council annual conference as a board member. We sincerely extend a special thank you to you for all of your work during the years that you have served as an ICC board of director as well as an officer. You have served the membership and our association well. We know you will continue to be an advocate on behalf of the Code Council, Code Compliance officials, as well as building safe and sustainable communities. We also know you're going to call us up and tell us what you think we should be doing whenever you get an idea in your head. We thank your lovely wife, Tisa, who is seated in the front row, for sharing you with us though these many years. We wish you and your family the very best in the future. And to quote something I didn't quite understand when Jimmy first came up here, throw deep, my friend. And now I'd like to present you a, a plaque. Watch it again. Okay. Jimmy, this plaque is in recognition of your service to the Board of Directors, as well as an uh, officer of the Code Council. Thank, Thank you. you, my friend, for all you have done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and thank all of you, the membership of ICC. Let me quickly say, as I said in Charlotte, and we were going to throw deep during my year as your president, I want to thank the board of directors from that year that uh, include Ron Lynn, that is not on the board anymore, Cindy Davis, and John Darnell. I think we did really good work that year. Bill, I want to thank you for being able, or for your being able to listen to some of my uh, rants and raves as far as trying to be an advisor to you and the executive committee. Uh, I encourage y'all to carry forward and still to continue to throw deep. And lastly, I talked to Sonny Dillon a while ago, and he said SEAL Team 7 is ready for the next mission for uh, the executive committee. I'll let you explain what's happening. Jimmy, thank you again for your service. And for those of you who don't understand what SEAL Team 7 is all about, please stop by and ask Jimmy how he got the name Sonny Dillon and where he's been going on all these trips when we couldn't find him. Will Gregory Anderson please come forward? We do have two outgoing board members this year, Gregory Anderson and Jack Layden. Unfortunately, John, Jack could not be with us tonight. He had some more pressing matters back home and is no longer here in Portland. So all of you, I would ask that you wish him well and thank him for his service the next time you see him. We are fortunate Gregory is with us, and we would like to recognize him for his leadership and contributions. 
They were indeed significant and much appreciated. His dedication has truly helped build a safer world. We will miss his presence, his insight, and thoughtfulness at board meetings. No, Gregory didn't say a whole lot, but when he spoke up, people listened. And yes, we will also miss him as our stand-in, most reverend, Reverend Anderson. <laughs> Gregory, I'd like to present you with a plaque recognizing your service to the members of the International Code Council. Gregory, congratulations, and thank you for all you've done for thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to take a few minutes to thank a number of people. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Board of Directors, the six presidents that I've worked under, the opportunity to serve you. Thank you for your trust in me in electing me to serve you on the Board of Directors. I thank you for your trust for your support. Thank you for your prayers. I thank you for all that you've allowed me to do for you. I thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Uh, I thank the board members that I've served with in the last six years and, and the six presidents. I'll tell you guys, we, we have some sharp minds in this organization. This organization is filled with individuals who are dedicated to our profession. Sharp minds. We're in good hands. The people that I've served with, uh, comparatively speaking, have no other consideration or concern more so than bettering the communities that they serve as well as the ICC. This time I'd like to thank also the ICC staff. Without the staff, I would not have been able to serve you at the level that I have been able to serve you with. They provide unbelievable support to the Board of Directors and your Executive Committee. And I want to take my hat off to the staff members uh, for all that you've done in the six years that I've served on the Board. And the last person that I'd like to, to thank is my wife, Carolyn. She's given me the opportunity to travel and, and do things and take care of things at home. And when you have a strong woman at home, guys, you can do anything. And I just want to thank you, honey, for your dedication and your support. So I'll leave you uh, tonight. I'll be close by. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere far. And I hope to serve you, certainly, in another level. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. God bless you. That's for you, Maggie. With the following re-elected directors, newly elected directors, and newly elected officers, please come forward. Ron Hoover, Tina Rakes, hold on, Bill Bryant, Greg Wheeler, Jim Brown, I know you're over there, Guy Tomberlin, and Stephen D. Jones, otherwise known as Junior, please come up on the stage. Please over here, if you would. All right, so you're the pin man. Boy, did I have a good job that time. <laughs> all right, looks good. We all fit. Members of the board, you have been elected by your peers to represent them on the International Code Council Board of Directors. With your advice and counsel, 
the organization will continue to move forward to reach new heights. Your attendance and participation at all board meetings is a key element in contributing to the success of the association. All of you, would you please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Very good. All of you know the right from left. In the presence of the members of this organization here assembled, I do solemnly promise on my sacred honor to perform the duties of which I have just been elected, faithfully, strictly, and impartially, to the best of my ability. Directors and officers, I hereby declare you members of the ICC Board. Mr. Tomberlin. I declare you the Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Tomberlin. And Mr. Jones, I declare you the Vice President. Continued I think so. We have uh, a tradition here. We provide the board members with pins signifying their service so that all who uh, encounter them at chapter meetings and activities know of their service and commitment to the association. So we'll distribute them now. The continued success of our association in the coming years depends in great measure upon the conduct of the Code Council's affairs. Congratulations to all of you, and please accept my sincere and best wishes during your term of office. Thank you. Would President-elect Ron Peaster please return to the stage? Or get him up here for the first time, maybe. And at Ron's request, would the following G12 coalition representatives please come forward? James Burns, Joe Finnegan, Joe Sauerwine, Gene Jakes, Rich McGee, Paul Martin, James Morganson, Sam Ricotta, Jeffrey Wilkinson, representing the New York State Codes Coalition. Let's go, guys. In addition, would Sal DeSimone, Steve Jones, Robert LaCosta, Chuck Lasky, Tom Panand, Larry Scorzelli, Jimmy Zaccone, representing the Building Officials Association of New Jersey, also please come forward. <laughs> Ron, this is the family that you have selected to support you <laughs> in your term of office. Ron Peaster, you have been chosen by your peers to lead this organization for the coming year. By placing their trust in you, your fellow members have shown their confidence that you will faithfully discharge that trust, and I know you will. I know you will endeavor to conduct the affairs of the association at all times in a manner 
which will promote its public safety mission, focusing on code development and code application, and with constant attention on the good of the Code Council as a whole. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. In the presence of the members, in the presence of the members of this organization here assembled, of this organization here assembled, I do solemnly promise, I do solemnly promise, on my sacred honor, on my sacred honor, to perform the duties, to perform the duties of the office of president, of the office of president. Faithfully, faithfully, strictly, strictly, and impartially, and impartially, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. My friend Ron Peaster, I hereby declare you president of the International Trade Council. Congratulations to all of our directors and officers. All right. You've just elected a new president, Ronald E. Peaster, and I would like to ceremoniously pass the presidency by passing the gavel to Ron. Stay right there. Ron is a director of the Division of Code Enforcement and Administration for the New York State Department of State. Ron is a certified code enforcement official and a prof professional code administrator. He manages a 60-person division that administers and enforces New York's Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code and State Energy Conservation Code. His department services and supports 1,600 local governments. He serves as the Secretary of State's designee to the New York State Fire Prevention and Building Code Council, which is currently preparing to adopt 10 volumes of the 2012 International Codes. including implementation of the IGCC at the state or local level. He is a member of the New York State Building Officials Conference, Capital District Chapter, the Eastern States Building Officials Foundation, Federation, the New England Building Code Association, the Firemen's Association of the State of New York, a New York State Fire Marshal and Inspectors Association, the International Association of Fire Chiefs Eastern Division, and yes, his favorite association, the American Institute of Architects. <laughs> he earned his bachelor's degree in architecture from Syracuse University and is a licensed architect. Ron first became involved with the ICC in 1999, when on behalf of New York State, he was asked to go see what this was all about. He comes from a long line of contractors, himself spending some of his teen years working in the construction and contracting business. His grandfather, who also trained as an architect, encouraged him to branch out, and that he has done. This includes building and designing his own home. While we may know Ron for his bow ties and plaid spotter shorts, his love of basketball, especially when Syracuse, Uni Syracuse University is on the court. <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> 
and his competitiveness when playing left, right, and center, his number one priority is being a dedicated father. He and his son, Gavin, are looking at colleges, and Emma, his daughter, is an excellent dancer with a special love of ballet. Ron, the gavel is a symbol of your office, which you must pass on next year. In order to help you commemorate this event, please accept a plaque announcing to all who may see it that this is your year as President of the International Code Council. Well, we'll give him the plaque tomorrow. <laughs> Ron, if this is the worst thing to go wrong during your presidency, you will be a lucky man. Here is the ceremonial plaque. That's it. I am done. And it is now your turn, Ron, to speak and lead this group. Congratulations. Thank you, Bill. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for that wonderful ovation. I want to thank you for allowing me the privilege to stand before you tonight and for the confidence you have placed in me to serve as your president for the coming year. This is a moment I will never forget. Thank you. Of course, there are many people I would like to thank people who have supported and encouraged me every step of the way. There's not enough time to thank everyone, but I would like to recognize a few who have helped guide me to this night. First, I would like to recognize the members of the G12 Coalition, represented by the gentleman who stood with me tonight. New York, New Jersey, you are my brothers and you are my sisters and I will never forget where I come from. I would like to thank our immediate past president, Bill Dupler. Bill, the vision and wisdom you have imparted has led us to a position of strength and confidence. I also want to thank you for your friendship. Serving as your vice president has allowed me to witness firsthand the true depth of your character and I am very proud to call you my friend. I would like to thank the other members of your executive committee, Steve Jones and Jimmy Brothers. Junior, Senator, <laughs> it's been a hell of a ride. <laughs> and I am also pleased to welcome our new Secretary Treasurer, Guy Tomberlin, to the executive team. Guy, I've watched you develop. Where are you, Guy? There you go. I've watched you develop and prepare for this moment, and I know you are going to be a great leader. I would also like to thank all of the directors who have served on your board this year. These are challenging times, but we have faced these challenges together, and I know we are poised to continue doing great things for the Code Council. And of course, it gives me great pleasure to welcome the newest members of your board of directors. Jim, Bill, and Greg, thank you for making the commitment to serve our association. As you begin board service, I offer a few words of advice. Tomorrow morning will be your first board meeting. Don't be late. On time, and you got to learn how to tend bar. And he was right. Next, I would like to thank the talented and dedicated staff of ICC, IAS, ICCES, and the Foundation. Our staff is second to none.
And I would like to extend a special welcome to Dominic Sims, our Acting Chief Executive Officer. Dom, where, I can't I never see these people. There you go, Dom. Okay. Dom, I can't tell you how excited I am to work with you this coming year. I also want to thank my own staff, the Department of State, Division of Code Enforcement and, Admi and Administration, who are back home in Albany. Although Dan Nichols is here. Dan is here. Michael Safir was here earlier. I don't know if Michael's in the audience, but these are the dedicated building safety professionals from the state of New York that have watched the shop and kept our division running smoothly while I was here conducting the important business of the Code Council. I would also like to thank our strategic partners and the many organizations and sponsors who contribute to our building safety mission. The support network that you create around ICC is critical to our success. And we understand strong relationships are not connected by one-way streets. And finally, I want to thank you, our members and chapters of ICC. You are the people who inspire me, your board of directors, and our tremendous staff to excel in pursuit of building safety. You are the people who serve on our boards, our councils, and our committees. You are the people who create the international codes. Thank you for your service to our association. <laughs> Next year, the International Code Council will reach a great milestone in our history. 2013 marks the 10-year anniversary of ICC's consolidation. Can you believe it? Think of all we have been through in the last 10 years. We have much to be proud of, and it is so important that we never forget where we came from. Over the next year, we're going to take a moment, look back, and remember some of the great accomplishments and achievements that have led us to where we are today. And we are going to recognize some of our members, the titans of ICC, our heroes who have created the greatest building safety association on the planet. As we pause to celebrate, we must not dwell on the past. My friends, the moment has arrived. It's time to step across the threshold and begin a new chapter. It's time to refocus and rededicate ourselves to our core mission, creating the best codes in the world. It is time to reassemble all of our members, regardless of who you are and what you do, as one cohesive association of building safety professionals. And it is time to announce for all to hear, we are proud of the work we do. We save lives, and we enrich our communities and the health and welfare of the citizens we serve. Yeah. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, it is time for the International Code Council family to stand proud, to join hands, and to move forward. Thank you. Get out of here. Oh, sorry. Did I say that aloud? Didn't mean to. Thank you, Ron. We know the International Code Council will be in good hands under your leadership. Well, it has been my pleasure to serve as your Master of Ceremonies this evening. Pretty much so, we managed to stay on schedule. 
Now, before I invite the CEO, Dominic Sims, back to the dais to tell us about next year's annual conference, I have one more little duty to do. As most of you know, I don't know why there are tall people here. Okay. As most of you know, I am the one who wears the ties around this place. So Bill Dupler did get ties for his board members, but they aren't quite as classy as some of the ones that I currently have here. These, I spared no expense, and you can tell I spared no expense, are, are for your executive committee, so they may dress in sartorial splendor. I particularly like this one here. These are for your vice president, secretary, treasurer, and past president. But for the president, wait a second. A man who, for some reason, is possessed by bow ties and a matching kerchief, so you can wear them in style in your coming year. With that, I will be leaving the dais. Dominic, it's all yours. Except for this. Thank you, Ron. I hope you enjoyed the evening as much as I did. Um, Ron, your, your entertainment and, uh, and your joy of life is, uh, has made this evening very, very special. Thank you to Bill and Janet Dupler for your hospitality this evening. Please give them another round of applause. Melanie and the, the local code officials that made this evening so special and the entire event possible, thank you very much. And to the ICC staff, thank you for all the hard work you do. You know, next year we're going to be in Atlantic City. And I got to tell you, I just have a feeling it's going to be a phenomenal event. So please, start making your plans early. Here's a brief video. Uh, some highlights, if you will, from the Atlantic City venue. That's Atlantic City. The final event The final event of the evening will be a preview to to the Atlantic City event, a reception. As part of the reception, we will award our final member gift of the year. I'd also like to thank ISO for their generosity in making these gifts possible at the opening session, the Cracker Barrel, the awards luncheon and tonight's Atlantic City reception. The reception is in the Port Portland Ballroom, uh, which is next door. We hope you will attend, enjoy yourself, and thank you for participating in this year's conference. <laughs>